How about a trip before we go back to school? We'll get a bunch of us together and go further up the river than we've ever been before. You can see Cobbler's Bay from here. What is this? Makeup? Homer, do you even know where we're going? There's a clearing up ahead. Beautiful right here. Let's do this again, back here in the same place. The same people. Yeah. Papa! Papa! Hello! Ellie Linton is a farm girl, and uh, she's. One of those girls who's, she, you know, she's, she's seemingly quite normal. She's loyal to her friends, she's very hardworking, and she's very honest and down to earth. And then she's thrown into the midst of this alternate reality, which is war. And you see her, you see so many different sides to her. She's obviously courageous and the reluctant hero, but at the same time, she's vulnerable and she's scared. And she uh, puts a lot of weight on her own shoulders. A lot of her own uh, pressures come from internally. And I think that she takes full responsibility of everybody around her at all times. You go first. Do you want to go first? I'll, I'll go, go first. first. Yeah, go right, ahead. I'll go first. Um, Kevin, he's a, he's a bit of a bit of an Aussie mongrel. You know, when there's a whenever you say there's always one in the group, Kevin's that one. He's he looks out for number number one himself, and um, and it, you know he's a bit he's a bit self centered at the start when everything's peaches and cream. But when everything his whole world gets turned upside down, you can see how much of a coward he kind of is, and how much he needed that comfort and support. And Corey, I think, is his rock, and without her, I think he'd go crazy. So, I think the movie's about him growing up, for him. No, it isn't. For him! That's what the movie's about. No, you know what I mean, Oz. <laughs> it's not tomorrow when Kevin grows up, is it? You know what, um, is it too late to recast? <laughs> Lee um, is kind of on the other end of the scale. He's not from the country at all. He's a townie, right? Um, and he's, he's grown up in this um, big family um, with a million kids um, helping his parents out every day at the restaurant and they actually live above the restaurant um, so he's a very family orientated guy and um, and I think he's sort of separated um, from all the other people at school just because of that um, and um, he's sort of a bit introverted he's, he's got that sort of silent mysteriousness um, and then, yeah, I think he's always had a crush on Ellie because, I mean, look Duh. at her, she's go gorgeous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, anyway, Cory, which is what the movie's really about. <laughs> um, she's quite shy and she's, um, she's really bolstered up by Kevin, I think. Um, he gave her a lot of confidence and everything, and also by Ellie. And um, she's really much a character who's... Oh, hello, sirens. Um, she's very much a character who's um, bolstered and, like, I already said that word, but she's kept up by her best friend and her boyfriend. So she's a loyal friend and, and that kind of girl, really. Great. She's a strong-willed girl. Yeah. I play Robin. Um, if you could stereotype her, I think you'd classify her as the religious character. But, I mean, there's a lot of depth to that as well. Um, throughout the film, she kind of questions her morality and her beliefs and stuff like that. So there is that underbelly which exists, but she kind of denies until the end of the film. And I play Faye, who's kind of the posh, princessy one. Um, she has a really nice arc in the film though. I mean, she starts out being very sheltered and innocent. Um, you know, she's she's smart, but book smart. I mean, she's never really seen outside Wirrawi or, you know, so by the end of the film, it was really nice to kind of play against that because she's kind of holding a gun and <laughs> blowing things up. And at the beginning of the film, she's taking makeup to camp. <laughs> So it was fun. I play Chris. He's a bit <laughs> of a stoner. And uh, yeah, likes to keep to himself a bit. Well, uh, Homer, he's the larrikin sort of troublemaker who sort of drifts through life with no worries, no you know, real attachment to anything. And uh, he, uh, as this story progresses, he becomes responsible and takes, you know, takes, some, uh, big, uh, makes, takes some charge in getting everyone to go out and do the right thing. And it's a... All the skills that he learned, you know, in his troublemaker days, become useful and invaluable to the group for them to survive. So it's a really cool transition for him. I kind of got the script sent to me, and I I read it and I loved it, and I thought it was very true to the book as well. And I had about four auditions. I initially went for Robin, and then I was called back as Fee, but 
It all went for like three months, like two and a half months. I was in Hong Kong at the time. I heard about the film. Employment. Loved the book. Yeah, um, and that's basically what I did. <laughs> Sent out a bunch of emails to all the um, contacts that I could find on the production website and was just like, this is me. Hire me, hire me. Like, you know, look at me. Like, we'll tell you on Monday, we'll tell you on Monday. And then like Monday, we'll tell you tomorrow. I was just like, oh my God, this is going on forever. <laughs> I'm waiting by the phone. Yeah. I'm waiting by the phone. A actually, I was at work and my agent always calls from a private number and all my mates knew that I was waiting for the phone call. Oh. So I got everyone to call me from a private number. <laughs> Every time I'd read it, it's like, hello? They go, ah! Practical joke. <laughs> Very funny. Uh, I was didn't know. No, 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 it was nothing like anything like that, I can assure you. Mine was clear, like, two weeks, like, two weeks before they even had uh, about to start filming, they didn't have a homer. And then I got the audition then, and then that Tuesday, went in audition, Friday, I was flying to Sydney seeing Stuart, and then the next Tuesday, I mean, I got the role, and then a week later or two weeks later, I was going rehearsing. So I was like, I think I was like one of the last. Me and Chris were actually one of the yeah. last. Whereas you get to sit through it for three months. In Sydney, thankfully, I'm not from Sydney, but in Sydney, every single young actor from about the ages of 16 to 25 was auditioning for our roles. So everybody was there was just a hive of activity. Everybody was talking about it. Everybody was wanting to know what was going on. I was constantly asked questions. People heard that I had callbacks, and I couldn't say a thing. And I was I kind of knew in my head who else had been cast, and I would meet people, and I was like, Oh, it'd be really terrible. <laughs> oh, but you're not in it. <laughs> I'd ask people, would you mind reading this for me just to hear the accent and get it sort of spot on as much as possible and um, everyone really helped out. I asked people to say if it didn't sound 100% and it was really useful to have that um, kind of support from everyone, it really helped a lot. So, it, was great for, it was great to have Rachel's dedication too, I mean like you know she'd always make sure that her accent was perfect because she, she said it before, she didn't want you know the audience to sort of be deterred by you know the sound of one word and they go oh, that, is she English or something she made sure that everything sounded Australian and it's it's really good to be working alongside that kind of dedication it makes you want to lift your game we rehearsal period mm -hmm. we were just doing the improv like, we weren't living together yet because okay. we went to location then we went through the grueling task of being really close to each other and living <laughs> in each other but um, uh, no through the improv was great I mean that was the first three weeks we we had some cool improvs together as well. So yeah, we never was, did a table read. I think I said yeah. that. we never did a table read. Great, so great. we never said like any of these yeah. lines or anything. So all the improv was like, you know, what our characters would have been like at school or in class if something happened yeah. or something. Well, in between scenes, in between like you know, yeah. events. Yeah, that was what we did. In between yeah, scenes. Yeah, that was great as well because you know it's all from Ellie's point of view, so you don't really see what happens to them. And, we thought, you know, let's flesh that out, and that was fun because you yeah. had to play with. There was a little bit of improv, mm -hmm. but um, stuck to Stuart's writing most of the time. There were yeah. probably about three or four words that were mine, um, and the rest were all Stewie's. Yeah. yeah, I can call him that now. Stewie, <laughs> yeah, pick it up. <laughs> we know this country better than they do. We can use that to our advantage. We can go out there using hit and run tactics. We have to start acting like soldiers. I can't tell if what I did was right or wrong. In the end, I think we just have to trust our instincts. We were like filming together all day, and then we were out in Maitland, like in yeah. the Hunter Valley. We were all living next to each other in, on the same level. Yeah. Um, yeah. And we'd all kind of go to the gym in like this big pack <laughs> yeah, yeah. of like eight <laughs> people, yeah, and we'd have like yeah. blood and like <laughs> fake cuts because we'd been filming all day and then all like walk Jeez. into the gym together. Kayla in her eye, right. she got, fell over a few times, didn't she? Uh, no, what happened was, oh, oops, Lizzie, and it was actually my entirely my fault. I was in, we were it shooting. Was the mirror's fault. Yeah, it was the car manufacturer's yeah. fault. Mm -hmm. What happened was, so they got hit by the car. <laughs> no, we were uh, in doing the showground scene and. The cameraman was like, can you look this way? Obviously, don't look at the camera, but we're here, and I'm walking this way, so I'm walking in the opposite direction to where I'm looking. So I'm, like, walking, ducking down at, like, head height with, like, the car doors. And there's one of these... What is that? Mirror. I know, but I don't drive huh? a car. What's that called? It's not a rear vision mirror. It's a thing. It's the... Yeah, okay, whatever. The anyway, yeah. side mirror. Anyway, yeah, you be the side <laughs> okay. mirror. This is a side clear, mirror, right? Clear, bang! <laughs> And, and then, then down. down. <laughs> but what I loved is that everybody laughed before they came to see if I was alright, so it was really kind of them. Phoebe, what's that? She apparated. That's the word I can... That's the verb I'm going to use because she was there one second and then gone. The next yeah, she was she, just out of there. 
snake and we look in the ocean, like in the water, ocean, who am I? Ocean. In the water. <laughs> in the water. And this giant, it was like a giant snake uh, was like slithering out. And it was like the day <laughs> after I had run into that water <laughs> to get away from the snake. And there it was coming out of it. Yeah. It was huge. Yeah. So we had to cut. We look, we look back and then I look back again and Phoebe's 10 metres over that way. I didn't even see her huge. run. Anaconda. <laughs> But I think we were fine, weren't we? Yeah, we were right. We were indestructible. We didn't form that relationship. No, no. <laughs> but we had a really Just good, uh, like, we, 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 the whole cast formed this really, really good friendship very quickly. It was actually surprising how quickly it happened. And, um, and, and Rachel, and Rachel's very professional about everything she does, so as soon as she it's knew so that... nice. Stop it. Don't make me be rude. <laughs> but no, um, but as soon as she knew it was time for the cameras to switch on, you know, we instantly knew that we, we had a really good friendship. We were able to pay each other out and, and, you know, put crap on each other. But at the same time, we know how to, you know, as soon as the cameras are on, we're, we're a couple. And yeah. Stuart Beatty, you know. <laughs> so we had a ball. He was very... It, you wouldn't pick that as his first time mm -hmm. in that job. And he was great. He... Uh, Collaborative effort to the max, and you know, he took all our ideas on board. And he was very like passionate about yeah, this project. Very much so. Um, he had a very clear picture of what he wanted, yeah. and he got he worked with the crew amazingly, and with all of us amazingly. So. He answered like whatever question, yeah. like how stupid, whatever question we had, he'd always have like a really good answer yeah. for it because yeah. he just knew the <laughs> script and he knew the characters and knew the story inside and out. Well, we've hit them, hit them hard. They're going to be coming after us now with everything they got. We've got to fight back. If anything happens, run. For us, this war begins tomorrow. Hopefully, Mr. Zeremy's hooks me up with some more roles at Filmic TV. <laughs> um, and that'll be about it.